Good morning, Beulah Church, and happy Pentecost Sunday to you. Um, Let's start off with some scripture this morning out of Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will ex- will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor, splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. That's the word of the Lord this morning from uh, Psalm 145. So I just want to fill you in with a couple of announcements that we've got going on this upcoming week. It's going to be a very busy week here at the church, as you can imagine. Um, so uh, this upcoming, or tonight actually, uh, we have backyard worship at the Edwards House at 530 uh, till about 645. Normally we've got, we've got dinner and some, some worship music and, and a discussion. So if you're able to make it to that, we'd love to see you. Uh, if you need directions or if you need the address or something along those lines, please do come, come to me and uh, ask me about where, where that might be and I can, I can help you get there. Um, and then we also have a, our new discipleship series that we're beginning uh, with the book Called uh, by Susan Robb. You can pick up your book in the Information Center, just right over, you know, right over there. Uh, and that starts on Wednesday at 7 on Facebook. So if you're able to engage with us in that way, we'd love to see you online. Uh, and then I would also encourage you to ask your Sunday school class leader uh, if you guys will be going through this book as a class. And so if you guys uh, would like to engage in that way as well, it would be awesome. Uh, as well, this upcoming Wednesday, another thing we've got going on uh, is our charge conference and admin board meeting. Uh, those are kind of hap- going to happen back to back. So if you're able to make it here at 7 p.m., we'd love to see you for, for that event. Um, and then we also have uh, garden supplies arriving tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Uh, these sort of garden bed supplies that if you're able to come and help us unload uh, the supplies that it would take to, to build garden beds, we'd love to see you tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. And if you'd like to be a part of sort of the beginning of this awesome sort of community engagement project, we'd love to, we'd love to see you there for that. Uh, and then one more thing I would like to mention is that today's altar flowers uh, were, were dedicated in memory of uh, Bertha Harvey by the Foster family. Um, so we'd love to give attention to that as well. So again, thank you all for, uh, for that this morning. And with the business of the church behind us, let's engage in some worship. Amen. Good morning, church. Are you ready to praise the Lord on this Pentecost Sunday? Amen. I invite you to stand with me as you are able. As Gabe said, with the business of the church behind us, we're invited to be a people of praise on this incredible day, what we know to be the birthday of the church. The promise of God comes in the fullness, the Holy Spirit given as a gift. The church is birthed, and it's our history. And for that, we're thankful. This morning, some of you may have received some tongues of fire, We ran out of tongues of fire, so we're going to invite you, if you received a tongue of fire, to use that to worship. And if you didn't receive a tongue of fire, use the tongue that God's given you, right? And use your hands, and use uh, those hands that God has given you to worship. This morning, we're invited to know that we have one who is our all in all. Amen? God, you are our all in all. We're going to lift our voices. The words for the song on our screen this morning. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. I invite you to lift your voice with me this morning as we acknowledge that we have won. The true desire of our hearts this morning, God, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to acknowledge that you are our one. Let's sing together, you are my strength.
And we sing together, Jesus. we come before you this morning on this day of celebration and we acknowledge that you are our one our hearts desire you are the one we seek god you are the one we long for you are the one who fills us who renews us who restores us god who gives us peace who reminds us that when we can't you already have god you fill us with grace you remind us that we are yours purchased with the blood of the one that you love your son god this morning we thank you we worship you and we worship you alone worthy is the lamb worthy O lord is the lamb your son our savior jesus christ morning if God is your one I would invite you to be seated amen God you are our one I would turn your attention now to our time of praise and prayer Gabe is going to lead us in a time of praise and prayer acknowledging before the Lord even though we proclaim that God is our one we need that one desperately amen 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 when it's, when it's Pentecost and we can recognize the, the power of the, the Holy Spirit, I think there's this sort of openness maybe that we begin to have of, of things that can happen in our, in our service. So thank you for, uh, for recognizing that with us this morning. Uh, so yeah, we're going to enter into a time of prayer and praise. And so uh, if we could turn our attention to that, we want to offer praise to, to God for the birth of Aurora Kaylee Piper. Uh, She was born on May 20th, weighing 6 pounds, 11 ounces, uh, which is exciting, right? Uh, She was was born to Shane and Jessica Piper, uh, big sister to, or yeah, Abby would be her big sister, and grandparents are Mike and Debbie Bates. So congrats to the the Piper family. Uh, We want to offer condolences to the family of Doris Clark as she was promoted to glory on May 15th. Uh, we want to continue to extend condolences to Sandra Sanderson as her brother Robert Prophet was promoted to glory on May 9th. 
uh, we want to continue to offer condolences to the Lane family as uh, Jerry's sister-in-law, Sandy, passed away. Uh, we lift Ariella, uh, Ari uh, the foster daughter of Pastor Don and Christy, up to the Lord uh, in prayer as she will be undergoing tests next week, and we pray for God's healing mercies there. And we continue to lift up prayers for Chuck Salmon's recovery, uh, and we continue to pray for Lee Goff's recovery from hip surgery. We also want to keep in prayer Landon Jones as, as he is dealing with, with cancer. Uh, so if you guys could continue praying for, for Landon, that would be, that would be great. Um, but if, if you guys could enter, in with, uh, enter into prayer with me this morning, that would be, that'd be awesome. So Father, we want to pray this morning for your presence. Holy Spirit, we want to pray that we recognize the, the glory of your presence this morning, the glory that, uh, that you came, that we can celebrate the, the birthday of the church this morning, that we can just kind of begin to look and notice for your presence among us, even this morning. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would help to direct our attention on you. Holy Spirit, would you help to direct our attention towards the word this morning, towards what you might have for us, what you, how you might help us grow this morning in the midst of, in the midst of worship. And so, Father, we, we do want to pray, though, for, uh, for Aurora, and we want to pray for, for the Piper family as they, are, uh, as they, as they welcome in their, their, new, their newborn daughter. Father, we thank you that she, is, uh, that, she, that she finally came. God, we thank you for that. And God, we want to pray for, um, we do want to pray for the, the family of Doris Clark, God, we want to pray for Sandra and her family, that you would offer peace to them, God, that you would bring, that you would bring peace through your presence to them. And Father, I want to pray for Jerry Lane, or yeah, I want to pray for the Lane family. God, I want to pray for um, Ariella and Don and Christy as, as they bring her in for testing, as they bring her in for uh, these, these sorts, of, sorts of procedures. Father, would you bring peace to the Gibson family? through all of that, all of what they're going through with, with Ariella. God, we want to pray for Chuck. God, as you would bring, uh, bring him into a place of recovery. And Father, I want to thank you that you have, God, that you have, uh, that you have already brought him a long way in that process. And Father, we want to continue to pray for, for Lee. God, that you would uh, continue to help his hip recover. And God, I want to pray for Landon. God, that you would bring healing to, to his to, to his situation, and that you would bring peace to his family. And Father, we want to continue to pray for Virginia Lavra and her family. And as we, as we enter into prayer, would we just kind of take a, take a moment of silence as we are, as we might have things that, that, that weren't mentioned, God, and would, would you just listen to, listen to the silent requests in our hearts? Now we want to pray the way that you taught us to pray, Father. So our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning for our meditation music, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to invite Zach to lead us, but we're going to sing our meditation music spirit song. I would invite you to just remain where you are in a posture of praise and prayer. And we're going to lift before the Lord our true heart song. Lord, let the Son of God enfold us with His Spirit and His love. Let him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Let him have the things that hold you. Anybody come this morning to church with things that are holding you? Let him come now, Lord, and take those things. Let the Spirit, like a dove, descend upon your life and make you whole. Let's sing together, Oh, let the Son of God enfold you. i 
morning as we know that we are filled with the very Holy Spirit of God. I would invite you, church, to join me now in affirming your faith. You'll find the words of the affirmation of our, fa of our faith on your screen to your left and your right, and I would invite you to join me in saying this together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the and life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. 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 This morning I would invite you to prepare your hearts now, church, to hear the Word of God on this Pentecost Sunday. No surprise, Acts chapter 2. I pray that you know that's where we uh, read together the filling of the Holy Spirit. As I prepare to read this, I'm going to invite any children in our children's church ministry to be dismissed now with our leaders. It is so good to know that our nursery this morning is full of children I think we have at least I think we have at least five children in the nursery this morning and baby Ariella is with us so that makes six so we're thankful this morning that uh, we have children in our nursery and I know Ashton and Kelly who've been there working uh, to prepare those spaces are thankful as well so we're thankful this morning that God indeed has blessed us in this wonderful day I invite you to prepare your hearts now for the reading of Acts chapter 2 Verses 1 through 13, you'll find the scripture on both of our screens projected this morning. If you have your Bible, I would invite you to follow along there. Hear now the word of the Lord. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their native language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Emilites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cap Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygeria and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Join me in prayer, would you? God, for this word we give you thanks. For the power of your Holy Spirit, God, we give you thanks. We invite now that that power would not only open the ears of us all to hear, our minds, God, to understand and interpret, but our hearts to receive is our prayer. In the name of the one who saved us, Jesus, we pray. Amen. You will know, church, for many weeks we've been traveling on a journey post-Easter, and we've been asking a question. If you've not been with us for a week or two or a few weeks or a month or so, we've been asking a question uh, together, what next? So, I'm mindful that the disciples following Resurrection Sunday morning, sort of the culmination of all they had witnessed and wanted in the ministry of Jesus, they stand at the empty tomb, and I'm certain they asked the question, what next? That gave us 
a sermon series for these many seven weeks asking and answering the question what next we know according to scripture and the promise of God given to Jesus and the disciples would have understand of would have understood for many years prophecies spoken of that there would be a fulfillment of the Holy Spirit given post-resurrection now not many understood that even the disciples who stood at the empty tomb and knew that Christ had been crucified and raised from the dead did not fully understand what this Holy Spirit would look like or feel like or be like but they waited and they asked the question what next you remember their last encounter with Christ Christ says to them in his resurrected body stay right here stay right here and wait because there will be one who will come that you will understand is the full fulfillment the fullness of God for you power Gabe mentioned last Sunday morning that power as understood as da- dynamite power it will be an on-the-scene explosion of the power of God anybody ever witnessed the on-the-scene explosion of the power of God it was dynamite and those who were there that day understood it to be dynamite and evidenced was fire from heaven a mighty rushing wind and fire from heaven anybody ever been around in a controlled explosion yeah a few years ago my mother-in-law's family farm we had a brush pile we wanted to burn anybody ever burned a brush pile I am the lover of all things fire I love a good fire I love a big burn pile a brush pile and on the farm you get that brush pile going using old motor oil or diesel fuel or whatever you have don't use gasoline right and so we had this huge burn pile and I mean huge burn pile we were going to burn it was limbs off the farm it was part of the front porch we had torn off it was it was all kinds of trash all wood and so my brother-in-law went down and he doused that area with fuel he doused it it was covered in fuel and we were standing a ways back which you know anyone who's ever had a bonfire or a brush fire you know you've learned from experience you better stand back and when he threw the match in that fire in that brush pile there was a sound and it went something like this and you could see rolling across the grass fire there was an evaporation of all the oxygen around and it sucked everything into that fire and then there was a big boom so much so of a big boom my mother-in-law heard it and felt it in the house and we all screamed anybody ever been around that kind of explosion it was controlled but it was a out of a control explosion right there was so much fuel on that fire it caused a dynamite type explosion where oxygen was sucked and I loved it after my initial scream and running backwards I loved it and like the kids around me I said can we do that again can we do it one more time that's what happened at Pentecost in the upper room there was an explosion on the scene explosion of the power of God we asked the question what next the disciples were waiting in the upper room and they're like so what's next all right we understood you've died and you've been raised from the dead we've seen you mysteriously a couple times you told us to stay right here but what's next we as Christians celebrate Easter we put away everything that decorates our homes and our churches for Easter and we say so what's next we roll into ordinary time of the church right ordinary time and then it's Pentecost after Pentecost it becomes ordinary time but I want to tell you what happens on this day makes none of our lives ordinary ever again did you know that what happens on this day makes none of our lives ordinary ever again you may be asking yourself this morning so what's next we celebrated Easter Easter's behind us oh, it's the birthday of a church we'll wear red today so what's the big deal I want to tell you there is not only a dynamite experience to be had today there is a dynamo experience to be had today do you know the difference between dynamite and dynamo dynamite is that one-time big boom effect 
It was Pentecost. Dynamo was what filled Peter to then stand up and preach. And 3,000 people were added to the church. Dynamo power is that long-lasting, slow burn for an everyday experience with the Holy Spirit. Now, you may have had a dynamite experience in your life where God filled you and you were miraculously healed or saved, and you said after that, so what? Dynamo power of the Holy Spirit is that slow burn where every day you have the power to be an overcomer. So what next? We're going to look a little bit into the history of who we are, of the people grafted onto the tree. How many of us know that Passover was the week that Jesus was crucified for our sake, right? It was Passover. They gathered in the upper room. Passover was not the only spring festival celebrated under the covenant given with God. For the Israelites also commemorated the Feast of First Fruits and the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost. Isn't it interesting, if you go back and read, the week that Jesus was sacrificed was Passover, but it was also the week of First Fruits. Resurrection Sunday morning was the first day of the Feast of First Fruits. Who is our first fruit in God? Jesus Christ. Who was given as the first fruit in the new kingdom? Jesus Christ. You think that's a coincidence, church? I don't think so. And 50 days from Resurrection Sunday, or first fruits, is Pentecost, which is what? A celebration, which marked the culmination of what started as the feast the day of Pentecost, or Shavuot, is the late spring Thanksgiving for the first harvest. It's the seventh day or the seventh Sunday on the 50th day of the seven weeks after resurrection. The first weekly Sabbath after Pentecost was also known as that celebration, the Feast of First Fruits. It's interesting that the number 50, 50, 50 days after resurrection, is that week of celebration. Everybody was gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate the harvest. God had been good. They didn't know how, God, how good God was. 50 days after resurrection, 50 days beginning the first week of the celebration of the wheat harvest, everybody was there again to give God thanks for God's faithful, fruitful harvest. The Holy Spirit comes. It's interesting, and I was going to make this point, the, the, the number 50 appears more than 154 times in the Bible. It's an important number. 50. It's a number of power in the presence of God. So, what an interesting fact that on the Sabbath of the first week of first fruits, Christ is raised from the dead. 50 days later in Jerusalem, they're gathered from all over the world to begin the celebration of the wheat harvest, thanking God for God's faithfulness. And Jesus says, you all just stay right here because when that feast begins, there's going to be a real feast to begin. The dynamo, not just the dynamite of God, the dynamo of God is going to be distributed and it's going to change your life forever. When you gather to worship God and present to God your thankfulness, for God's faithfulness, God's going to reveal God's self in an incredible power that will change your life. And Peter, the one who denied me, will not only be given dynamite power, you're going to be given dynamo power. Because Peter, you're going to need it for the long haul. Anybody this morning need dynamo power for the long haul? Yeah? We need dynamo power for the long haul. The Greek word for power is dunamis. That's the word that we were given last week by Gabe. Dunamis. One English derivative from that same word is the word dynamite. And some tend to emphasize the power of God in explosive ways. Dynamite. It happens on the 50th day post-resurrection. It's a dynamite experience. 
I've experienced God in a dynamite way. We had a missionary friend of ours come from Brazil. There was this cream given there that was blessed. And when that cream was used, people were, rem re were remarkably and miraculously healed. This cream was not God, but this cream had been blessed by God. And that missionary friend brought it to me in Waynesboro where we are going to have a reunion and a revival. And he said to me, Pastor Don, I want you to smell this, this incredible cream. It's been blessed. So many people have been healed and restored by the anointing of this cream. I don't know what came over me, but when he handed me that vial of cream, instead of smelling it, I drank it. I just drank it. And there was such an incredible move of the Holy Spirit in my life. Later that evening, we were in prayer, and that same missionary anointed me with that oil and prayed for me. Now, you may be saying, Pastor Don, you're getting back to your Pentecostal roots this morning. The moment that he anointed me with that oil, I was slain in the Holy Spirit. I hit the floor, and the next thing I knew, 30 minutes had passed, and I was laying there praising God. I've experienced the dynamite power of the Holy Spirit. That word, the derivative of that word meaning on the spot, powerfully explosive, dramatic healings, dramatic miracles happening. A second English derivative of that same word dynamo, dynamite or dunamis is dynamo, which is for us an understanding of a motor or an engine. A dynamo is just as strong as a dynamite, but maybe more so, but that power, the power of dynamo is not explosive. It's quiet, it's controlled, it's steady. It's the kind of power we as believers need every single day. That's the power of this day, Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. It was explosive. There were tongues of fire. Everyone who heard those tongues said, wait a minute, they're speaking in my language. This morning we have a sister in Christ, two sisters in Christ, friends of mine who speak Spanish. Y yo puedo hablar con ellos y yo puedo decir cosas tan grandes del Señor. They understand it. But on that day at Pentecost, someone said, wait a minute. I'm from 28 hours away by camel. How could they be speaking my language? But I want to tell you what's important about that moment is they weren't just speaking a language. The Word of God tells us they were, what? Announcing the goodness of God. They were proclaiming the goodness of God and the power of God and the healing of God and the resurrection and power of Jesus Christ. It wasn't just an example of a foreign language being spoken. It was proclamation of the good news. That's what they heard. I want to tell you this morning, church, Pentecost isn't just about the birthday of the church. It isn't just about us getting together and realizing that, hey, there's some importance to the feast weeks that we're grafted into. There's significance there that we can't even understand. No, there's more than that. It's about the dynamo power of God that fills us for every day living. My prayer for you is that you have a dynamite, dynamite experience with the Holy Spirit. A dynamite experience that you can't even understand fully, but it changes you. That's my prayer for us as a church. But just as important, and maybe more important, is that dynamo experience where we're filled with the Holy Spirit and the motor that's us is God. And daily, daily, we're given the strength and the ability and the power daily. That's dynamo power. That's the power I want, God. I'll take those one-time experiences that are powerful and overwhelming. But, God, I want a dynamite, controlled, quiet, and steady presence of God in my life. This morning, when we have that dynamo experience with God, church, it looks like this. The ability to live a godly life in the midst of wickedness. Anybody acknowledge that we are living 
amidst wickedness. We in dynamo power are given the ability to live a godly life, not just a life. The world around us is living just a life. We are given the ability to live a godly life in the midst of wickedness. We are able to accomplish all that God wants us to do, Philippians 4.13. We are consistent witnesses of Jesus, Acts 1.8. We endure suffering and persecution, 2 Timothy 1.8. We overcome our own deficiencies, 2 Corinthians 12, 7 and through 10. Anybody have any deficiencies this morning that need to be overcome? That's dynamo power, living a godly life, accomplishing God's will, consistent witness of Jesus Christ, enduring suffering and persecution, overcoming your own deficiencies. And being enabled to live in undesirable circumstances with unlikable people. Anybody have to live in undesirable circumstances? God, you give me the ability. That's the dynamo power that I long for this morning. I'll take the one-time dynamite experience, but I want it coupled with the motor that is your Holy Spirit in me for a daily experience of your power. When we look at the second chapter of Acts, And beyond, we see the Holy Spirit regenerating those formerly dead in trespasses and sin. If you follow the history of the Holy Spirit, there is regeneration and new life and empowering of all believers to to resist sin. The Spirit indwells His presence in us, which is an indication that we belong to Christ. That's this dynamo power. We resist sin. We're regenerated into new life in Christ, and we then represent Christ. The Holy Spirit who leads the believer also awakens us to the status that we are adopted children of God. The key word there is awakened. I want to ask you this morning, has your spirit been awakened to the fact that you belong to God? That's dunamis power. Every single day, God, I'm your child. And if we know we're someone's child, that should change the way we live. God, I am your child. That dunamis power reminds me that not only am I saved and I'm overcoming and I don't have to give in to temptation and be allured by the sin of this world, but God, you in me are a living witness that I am your child adopted by grace and that changes everything about who I am. And therefore, I will bear witness that I am a child of God. I want to ask you this week, how many of us has borne witness that we are children of God? How many of us have borne witness that we are children of God? Too often, our dynamite experience or a one-time experience isn't enough energy and power to get us through every day. When that dunamis motor of God identifies us as a child of God and gives us the ability to bear witness that we are children of God. Church, Pentecost is our birthday. But more importantly, Pentecost is our power. It's how we bear witness every single day that we are children of God. The Spirit intercedes on our behalf when we are too weak or too ignorant to know how to do it. Anybody ever been too weak to pray? Too confused to pray? Too overwhelmed to pray? Because the situation in your life is all-consuming? God, that's that dunamis power we long for this morning. The Spirit supplies us with the gifts that we need to serve God and serve one another. I want to ask you this morning, when's the last time you took an inventory of your gifts? God, how is the dunamis power of your Holy Spirit equipping me with gifts to build your kingdom? What are my gifts, Lord, and how am I using them for your glory? Do I bear witness every single day that I am your child? Do I bear witness every single day that something happened in me to transform me from the inside out and I'm different? God, that's dunamis power. I want that motor of the Holy Spirit in me every day fueled to be the different. 
fueled to be the different God. That's what I want. It is in the Spirit that we are baptized by Christ, incorporated into the body of Christ. How many of us this week have lived our life as if we were the body of Christ? Hands and feet and ears and eyes to see as Christ would see and serve as Christ would serve and love as Christ would love and forgive as Christ would forgive and go the extra mile as Christ would go the extra mile. I had a lady call me once from Charlottesville at 11 o'clock at night. She needed a ride home. It was in her own poor decision-making that got her there. And she called me and she said, Pastor Don, will you come to Charlottesville tonight and pick me up? About 11.30, about a 35-minute drive. My children were all in bed and I am not going to pick up someone by myself at 11.30 at night. And certainly not a woman. And I said, I am really sorry, but I can't do that. Maybe I could find someone who could help you. And she said, I thought you were a second mile Christian. I thought you were a second mile Christian. Yes, God, I want to be a second mile Christian. I want to be a second mile Christian. But give me the wisdom and the discernment to know how and when to be a second mile Christian. Give me the ability to use my resources and yours to be a blessing to someone and to also hopefully impart wisdom to that person on how to make better choices for themselves. It was meant to be an insult, but I took it as an opportunity to be mindful of godly wisdom. God, the dunamis you give me gives me wisdom and how to respond to someone lovingly and kindly. Even when they insult you, Lord, help me to be loving and kind. The gift of the Holy Spirit, the dunamis power of God is a, hear this church, guarantee. We had our driveway repaved a couple of weeks ago. And the guy told me, that driveway has a eternal guarantee that it will not be destroyed by water or sun or damaged by the wind. That was funny. He was certainly true. There was a guarantee on that driveway that the wind's not going to damage it, and the rain's not going to damage it. This morning we have an eternal guarantee and a seal. Did you hear that, church? A seal that we will inherit the full promises of God. That is the dunamis of the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit, not the flesh, that enables you to bear fruit. Did you know that? If you're doing it in your own power and strength, you are going to grow weary in doing good deeds. God, it's that dunamis motor in me that helps me and enables me, equips me to, to bear good fruit. The Spirit equips us for battle. Now, you may say, Pastor Don, we're not taking to street fighting. That's not the kind of battle I'm speaking of, church. The battle of spiritual realms. The power of the Holy Spirit is ours to both assist us, to resist the temptation of the enemy, and to fight against the enemy. Anybody ever heard of spiritual warfare? God, we are in battle daily. Give us the equipment needed by your dunamis power to be more than victorious. The Spirit equips us for battle and fills us with joy even in the midst of trial and suffering. Anybody ever been in a terrible situation but yet you had joy? God, this joy you've given me can't be stolen by the circumstances of my life. And above all else, the Spirit is given to shine a light upon Jesus as the direct focus of our heart's confidence and adoration of him alone. Jesus Christ, you are my confidence. The Holy Spirit of God shines in us the bold confidence that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. In him alone we trust. I want to tell you, church, this morning, that's dunamis power. I like the dynamite stuff. I like the quick fire and big explosion. But what I need every single day 
is the motor of the Holy Spirit in me. That dunamis power, that quiet, patient, ever-working presence of God. That's what the disciples needed, and that's how the church was born. I want to ask you this morning what your motor looks like. What that motor of your spirit looks like. Well, for some of us, it's been pushed away in a barn for many years and forgotten. We serviced it every now and again throughout the years, but mm, for some of us, we've never experienced that motor. We don't know what the motor of the Lord looks like in our lives. We've been to church all of our lives. We were baptized into this church. Our name's on the membership roll, and we're good to go. Some of us have a motor. It's there, but it's clangy and bangy, and every once in a while it bumps into other people, and causes some conflict, shoots oil on them, and gas spills out, and there may be a fire that breaks out over here in the grass. Some of us have a motor we tend to every day. We change the oil, we fill it with the fire of God's Word. I want to ask you this morning about your motor. Not the dynamite, that one-time big explosion of experience, but that dunamis power of God that every day is quietly, patiently, persistently, and consistently working. So that in any circumstance you say, God, I have joy. God, I'm an overcomer. God, I can and I will. Because with you all things are possible. I want to ask you about your motor this morning on Pentecost Sunday morning. Now, as I've said, I like a big fire. I like it hot. I like a big explosion. But I also like that consistent, slow burn that brings heat to the whole house. Anybody in need of a good, consistent, slow burn this morning of the Holy Spirit? Lord, I want to drag my little motor out of that barn, and I want you to fire it up this morning. I want you to change the oil, give me a new spark plug, I want you to check that pull cord, God. I want you to fill me up with some gas. And I want that slow burn to begin today in me. Anybody want that slow burn this morning? Gracious God, we come before you on this day of Pentecost. We wear red, God, and we recognize that fire is represented by the color where we, red we wear. But God, it's so much deeper than that. So much deeper than the color of the attire that we chose for this day. We come to worship you, God, and we acknowledge that the gift of your Holy Spirit transformed the reality of our universe, our world, our past, our present, and our future. It was the dynamite power needed to kickstart an understanding for the disciples and the apostles and all who heard and saw that day what it really meant to be a follower of Jesus Christ. It was the dynamite power that got them up out of their seats and preached sermons to thousands of people, equipping them for ministry. But God, it was also that slow burn, that dunamis motor in each of them that carried them full of, through the full of their lives until they stood before you in glory. God, this morning we as your church, we, bo we want both. We want that fire. We want that explosive understanding of your power and grace. God, we long for miracles and mysteries we long to see you poured out in us and among us god in ways that are explosive but god too we long to know you in a dunamis kind of way that would then carry us through the every day of our life god our heart's desire this morning god is that you be the motor that drives the whole of who we are you be the motor god that drives the whole of who we are because, God, when you do, it changes everything. It changes us. It changes our church. It changes our family, our community. It changes our world. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, fill this place. Holy Spirit, fill your people. Dynamite power of God, change us. Dunamis power of God, Live in us. Fuel us, God, is our prayer. My prayer for you this morning is that you not leave this place 
without having an experience of either the dynamite power of God or the dunamis power of God. God, send your Holy Spirit now. Fill your people is our prayer. Fill us. Fill us, oh God, with your dynamite power and your dunamis power. We seek you, God. We love you and we praise you. We long for you, God. Praise you, God, and thank you. Praise you, Lord, and thank you. This morning we're going to close our time together praying the breakthrough prayer for our Pentecost season. God of wind and flame, stir up our hearts through the power of your Holy Spirit. On Pentecost, your Spirit moved freely through the church and transformed our hearts to know you fully. Help us now to be open to that same Spirit so we might experience transformation today. Guide us in the transforming love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to change our closing song. Is that okay, Zach? We're going to sing, You Are My All in All. So can we go back to that slide, Suzanne? I'm going to invite you to stand this morning again one more time. I think it's fitting that we close this time inviting the Holy Spirit to know that we choose God. We choose the one. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. That's the dunamis power. That's the motor speaking this morning. You are my strength, Lord, when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Let's sing this this morning as our closing song. God, inviting your dunamis power to fill us and fuel us for the week ahead, the month ahead. Lord, let's sing now. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. And we sing Jesus. Jesus. Lamb of God. God. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name, worthy is your name, taking my sin, my cross, my shame, Rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, Lord, when I fall down, you pick me up. When I'm dry, when I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all. And we sing with the whole of our hearts this morning that it's you and you alone, Jesus. out your people Lord reminding us this morning that Pentecost is about that power the fire in us daily the dunamis the motor of our life God that is you 
that we've been marked, we've been guaranteed, we've been sealed, we are adopted as your children. God, help us now, empower us now to go and live the difference. Live like those who belong to you, Lord. On this Pentecost Sunday, God, it changes us. You change us, is our prayer. Go now, church, into the world, representing the one who loves you, the one who died for you, the one who rose for you, the one who fills you now with his peace, his grace, and his mercy, the one who makes a difference in the whole of who you are. Go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.